It's Wednesday, March 2nd, and the time for your Barbados Today morning news update. With Barbados still battling the COVID-19 pandemic, changes had to be made to the Krapova Festival. But Chief Executive Officer of the National Cultural Foundation, Carol Roberts Riffer, is assuring that this year's festival will be a spectacle regardless of the format it takes. She tells Barbados Today she fully expected that Barbadians and visitors alike would still be treated to the biggest summer festival on the island. I don't like the term modified. We know that we have to produce it within the context of a country that is still living with the COVID-19 pandemic. Modified tends to imply less impactful, but it will be almost a COVID-19 edition of the Crop Over Festival as we know it. That does not mean that it will not be as exciting, as impactful, as colorful, as creative, as innovative, um, as it can be within our current reality. So there are two things you have to bear in mind. One, that we are still managing the COVID-19 pandemic. Two, that crop over is one of the largest economic drivers in Barbados. There are very few events that give you that sort of return on investment where uh, the cost of producing the festival is X, and the returns to the economy, not to the foundation, to the economy, is over 10 times X. Roberts Riffer said discussions surrounding the staging of the festival were set to commence today with various stakeholders. They've been invited to bring representatives, and they've been invited, if they care to, to send proposals prior or to come to the table with proposals. And it's at that time that anything can be discussed. Okay. So you cannot say that anything is on or off the table until you have had the discussions. Government's recent decision to ease restrictions on travel and weddings will make the country a more attractive destination. Word of this from the Barbados Hotel and Tourism Association, whose Chief Executive Officer Rudy Grant said with the Crop Over Festival also slated to be held, it would help attract visitors to the island even as it continues to battle the COVID-19 pandemic. The Barbados Hotel and Tourism Association welcomes the recent changes to the COVID-19 protocols, which facilitates the easing of some restrictions. We believe this will play a major role in attracting visitors to the island over the coming months and into the summer. We fully support the updates to the border entry requirements. Many of our visitors and tour operator partners have been commenting on the existence of easier entry protocols in our competitive destinations. So this now brings us more in line with what is happening in the region. We expect that the introduction of the rapid antigen tests in conjunction with the removal of the processing of passengers at gates 14 to 16 at the Grantley Adams International Airport will assist to relieve congestion and allow for easier processing of passengers. These adjustments will allow us to remain competitive without compromising the health and safety of locals and visitors. Grant said the relaxation of restrictions for weddings would positively impact the direct tourism services. He also suggested that the Crop Over Festival, Barbados's first since 2019, would still attract thousands of visitors. The easing of the restrictions on events such as weddings is another positive for the tourism industry. It will give our direct tourism services members the opportunity to get back to full operation while adding to the attractiveness of our offering as a destination. This will be beneficial, especially for the summer period. Krapova's return will also be another appealing factor for the summer. These types of events assist in boosting our rivals, so we are confident that this will occur this year with the reintroduction of the Krapova Festival. After two years of restrictions, curfews and lockdowns, many travelers are looking forward to participating in events and activities in a safe and secure environment as part of their holiday. The same applies for sporting events, which as a niche have also traditionally been appealing to some of our visitors. Barbados continues to record an increase in heart attacks and strokes. 
That's according to the Barbados National Registry 2019 Cardiovascular Disease Report. The documents pointed out that studies had shown that the prevalence of cardiovascular disease was increasing and rates in the Caribbean were higher than other countries in the Americas. In 2019, Barbados registered 547 people with heart attacks and some 758 stroke cases. This included confirmed hospital diagnosis and cases identified after death using death certification records. Local entrepreneurs are being encouraged to increase their businesses' export potential to take advantage of increasingly lucrative markets within the region and beyond. The advice from Chief Executive Officer of the BIDC, Mark Hill. He noted that more small businesses have popped up over the past two years because of the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on the economy, but these small-scale ventures have yet to fully realize the great possibilities outside of Barbados. COVID has shown us that our base load capacity um, within that market space is about four billion dollars us and if we're going to grow our economy our entrepreneurs our enterprises must have an export oriented mindset is critical Absolutely. so as long as we keep focusing inward what we're doing we're, 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 we're committing ourselves to build weaker organizations now let me explain what i mean we can either try to produce what we call triathlons so people who can run, ride, and swim, which is, which is very, very expensive to do in terms of the investment in producing that type of entrepreneur, or we can produce, focus on producing good riders, which are local entrepreneurs who can get around the island and generate as much revenue as they can within the 300,000 market, or we can produce swimmers that can go beyond the shores of Barbados and reach into the region, reach into the globe, explore the 52 bilateral agreements that this country has with all the other nations around the world, so that we now have access to a $28 trillion market. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I am Onika. I am a mother, I'm a daughter, and I'm a wine educator. When vaccines first came on the scene last year, I was really apprehensive about getting vaccinated. I was worried about taking a drug that I felt was experimental. So at first, I really wasn't about it. I decided to get vaccinated. I had to acknowledge the fact that I am asthmatic and my son is also asthmatic. I have a career in wine. We depend on our senses and I decided that I did not want to risk it for being afraid of taking a vaccine. Coronavirus has affected everyone around the globe. And keeping this in mind, make sure that your decision is not a selfish one and that you're thinking of the benefits of the whole. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To developments in the region, investigations are underway in the Bahamas into reports of printing companies tampering with vaccination cards. And the country's health minister, Dr. Michael Darville, is urging any company involved in such illegal practices to cease and desist. Specific to where the vaccinations were done, and uh, the press release spoke specifically about printing companies uh, tampering with cards, changing the Commonwealth of the Bahamas on a card that may be for another country. And once we pick up things like that, we need to move swiftly to let the public know that it's a violation. And I don't want to go into the details of the investigation, uh, but uh, we want all print companies who are producing cards, uh, and if they are involved in this kind of activity, to stop immediately because it was referred to the Royal Bahamas Police Force. It's a large amount, but what we have to do is we have to nip it in the butt right away because uh, a lot of people who may be doing it may not realize it's against the law to manipulate a card from a foreign jurisdiction and put the Commonwealth of the Bahamas a seal on the card. And finally on the international front, 
The United Nations and its humanitarian partners on Tuesday launched a $1.7 billion flash appeal to urgently help people displaced by the Russian military offensive inside Ukraine and beyond its borders. According to officials, the escalating conflict has triggered a steep rise in essential supplies and services have been disrupted. Here's the UN Emergency Relief Chief Martin Griffiths. We're launching a humanitarian appeal for the Ukraine crisis with two components. A three-month flash appeal for the situation inside the country, which I have been coordinating, and a regional response plan for the situation beyond Ukraine's borders. Flash appeal for response inside Ukraine, which I'm responsible for coordinating, will need $1.1 billion in funding for three months to help 6 million of the most vulnerable in Ukraine for that three months. And of those 6 million, we calculate over a million uh, will be internally displaced. That's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbidestoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.